Blessings and peace to you. This is SB Favor Thinking Podcast, and my name is SB Favor. How are you doing today? It is Wednesday, June 15, 2022. Another wonderful day, and another day to be thankful. And as I always say, if you focus on what is good, then you can project something good to happen. So make sure you are focusing on the things that give you peace and joy and love. Focus on the positive things. Don't focus on the negative things because the negative things are of no benefit. So focus on what is good. If you would like to give to the podcast, you can give at cash at dollar sign SB favor. Thank you so much for your support and your donations. Well, my co-host for today, or guest host, I should say, his name is Damakan. He is a youth mental health advocate, and he's also a music artist. And I'm so glad he's here today because we are going to talk about mental health for the youth, caring for yourself. A lot of young young people are going through different things. And sometimes when people go through things, sometimes they don't talk about it. Some people are very introverted and they become isolated and they just don't open up to others. And so we're going to talk about this topic just to get some insight on what's going on with this generation of young people and what should you do if you're going through something? We're going to answer those questions for you. So I hope that this episode gives you some inspiration and encouragement. Damakan, how are you doing today? Good. Great. Thank you so much for uh, part- participating, excuse me, participating in this uh, episode. Um, how was your day? Uh, it was good. I mean, I woke up. I was a bit in a bad mood. What? In a bad mood? Oh, boy. Uh, We're going to have to talk about that. Overall, it's good. We're going to have to talk about that. But we're going to talk about um, caring for yourself, youth mental health. And I see that you are a mental health advocate. So before we get on to that, um, tell the listeners about yourself. So I got on to Instagram about two years ago. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, at first, I just started, like, promoting other people on the app okay. that were well-known. Mm-hmm. And then I really got into making music for myself and then building my own platform. And then also Calmly Advice, which is a youth organization for, well, it's a youth organization led by kids. Okay. And it um, promotes mental health because I think it's important after, especially COVID-19. Wow, that's good. So aside from um, the whole pandemic thing, what made you want to help the youth in that in that area? Well, um, you know, going through the pandemic, especially 2021, mm-hmm. you know, everything was online and remote, especially at that time. So going through that myself, it made me realize, well, this might be a good time for the youth because, you know, I'm very young, like to help them. Yes. Because I feel like that's important. Like they could be going through some times, like hard times. Yes. Yes. It is very important to um, help the next person. Um, we live in a society where people are selfish, unfortunately. And to have the concern or willingness to help other people, I think that's beautiful. Um, I commend you on your efforts and um, I pray you do well in that area. Um, it is so important that we work on ourselves and the youth and not just the youth, but everybody went through something um, during the last two years of the pandemic. And um, I like um, your calls and what you are doing. So tell me a little bit about your um, your music overall, I mean, you said, what what type of music do you create? You said you create music. For this first album, usually, it was mostly pop music and instrumental. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the next album that I plan to create or single, mm-hmm. I want to expand and kind of be versatile. Okay. All right. Well, 
So caring for yourself. Caring for yourself has everything to do with your attitude first. You know, on this podcast, I'm kind of always talk about our thoughts. Our thoughts play a part in our the whole person, right? Because there's a scripture in the Bible. I'm a believer. I believe in, in God, of course, and I believe solely in the Bible. Um, of course, I'm open to invite and discuss other um, spiritual practices, but the Bible is something that I read more. Um, but there's a scripture in the Bible that says, as a man think of in his heart, so is he. And so we all have to maintenance our thought life. So that being said, caring for yourself has everything to do with how you think. And so Damakon, let me ask you this question. Um, what do you think most youth are doing now that the pandemic has kind of um, slowed down a little bit? What do you think they're doing now from your perspective? What do you think they're doing? Um, pre-pandemic, you know, most kids or teens. Mm-hmm used to be like more active they mm-hmm. play sports and do things with their friends more but now it seems like people don't want to do that and they kind of just want to be by themselves or they don't want to stay fit or stay active which i understand because we were home right for a year right so so basically uh you're saying that activity you know for people that are that were very active they're not as active as they used to be basically Yes, and also um, socializing. Hmm. Kids also, they're not socializing as much anymore. Wow, that's interesting because you are giving me insight. Um, My daughter is much older. She's not a teenager. And I do have nieces and nephews. But um, I didn't know that um, younger, younger people were not as active as they used to be. So tell me um, this, what would you say to someone that is isolated and staying to themselves? What would you say to them to change from that? Because it's okay to, you know, have the me time, but we should all have a balance when it comes to that. It's not too good to be by yourself too much because if you are alone too much, then that's another problem. So what would you say to someone that was active and now they're not as active as they, as they used to be? What would you say to that person to encourage them or inspire them to kind of get back to living their life? Because we have to get back to normal. Yeah. Um, I'd probably, you know, go up to them, approach them and be like, you know, do you want to hang out with us? Like my group of friends, like include them. Mm-hmm. That's the first step to solving an issue. It's inclusion. Yes. Most kids also don't feel like they're included. So I would include them first and they'd feel a part of the group setting that they're now in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. An activity would probably go up, but now they'd be more inclined to do things because they're happier. Yeah. So tell me about um, Calmly Advice. Okay. So Calmly Advice was founded this year and mm-hmm. it was made for promoting mental health and it's run by kids okay. it's separated into three parts mm-hmm. um chapter leaders which are people who like oversee the program and oversee the publications yes so they like proofread everything mm-hmm. and then we have youth ambassadors who promote our program mm-hmm. and we have um we have writers who write the publications and they send it to the chapter leaders so everything's pretty organized and kids get to see mental health tips and stuff like that, which mm-hmm. I think is very useful. Excellent. Can you give out some information if somebody would like to reach out to you or the organization? Can you give that information out for me? Oh, our email is calmlyadviceyouthorg at gmail.com and our Instagram handle is calmlyadvice. Awesome. Well, we we are in some serious times and, you know, I think that... um Everybody, on some level or another, is going through different things. You know, we got the gas prices and then, you know, different things going on on the news. And to know that the youth are going through their own mental health issues, that's that's another, another problem that we have to deal with. And somebody like yourself, um, I think it's just an excellent thing to... Um, 
be an advocate and connect with those that you can help. Um, what would you say to uh, someone in your age group um, if they are dealing with some level of depression? What would you say? What would you say to that person? Um, first thing I would do, I would not shame them. Yes. Like I would not um, ask them, like, are you depressed? Because then, you know, that makes situations worse. Mm -hmm. But I would approach them and I would, you know, maybe include them. Mm -hmm. So they feel better. Right. Or maybe if it's really like bad to the point where they might commit suicide, then try to convince them to go get help from an adult. Right. teacher. Right, right. Yes, it is important that we are sensitive to one another. Sometimes, you know, we all are distracted, um, whether we're at home or in the public. And it's very important that we are sensitive to pay attention to the needs of the next person, especially the youth, because... Um, if you are sensitive to the next person, you will be in a position to know something about what they're going through or to just help them in some type of way. Do you believe that, Damakon, to be sensitive to others? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's very important. Um, I think that sometimes, like I said earlier, we live in a society that's filled with a lot of selfish people, but we don't have to be selfish. We should be sensitive to the next person to check on them, pray for them, ask them if they are okay, ask them if they need something. Um, because sometimes if you just are sensitive to the next person and if you are paying attention, that right there in that position, you will enable that person to possibly open up to you and actually talk to you about what they're going through. So it's important to be sensitive to the next person. So Damakon, let me ask you about this. Um, do you know anyone that has been dealing with bullying? Do you, do, do, does your organization has a, have a uh, department for that in terms of what you cover? Um, in a few months, or like in the near future, I would hope so. Mm -hmm. We just started. So right now we're focusing on just like advocating okay. for mental health. But that's a great thing that you mentioned that I would definitely be open to including. Yes, because a lot of grade school children deal with that. And um, when a child is dealing with that, they automatically sometimes go into isolation and that starts to um, become a problem because from being bullied um, depression anger resentment all those things start to build up in a person you know um, and it's not good but this topic caring for yourself youth mental health um, is something I wanted to talk about for quite some time and Damakan I'm so glad that you um, were willing to come talk to me because in the future, I want to talk about it more because um, I want people on all levels to know that you're not alone. And each day you wake up, you wake up to partake of a blessing. And the fact that you wake up to partake of a blessing, you should always... Remember that you are blessed. All of us are blessed. On some level or another, we are blessed. I mean, um, I know sometimes, you know, life can be difficult, but we don't have to give up and we can um, gravitate and hold on to hope, which is in God. We don't have to succumb to darkness and things to pull us down. Um if you open up and talk to someone when you're going through something, then you will have the resources and tools to become more healthy. Um, it's, it's, it's not good to isolate and keep everything to yourself. Have you ever gone through that, Damakon, where you just isolated yourself and became just totally intro introverted? You have, have you ever done that? 
No, fortunately. No, no. I, I have. I have as a as a child. Um, I was very introverted and I was the type of person I, I didn't like to speak to the public. Of course, now I do it all the time. But um, when yeah. I was, yeah, well, when I was a teenager, I was very introverted. I was very isolated. And I was that way because I was quiet and I was bullied a little bit. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say. <laughs> I was bullied a little bit and I was a bully too. And, um, oh. but through that experience, um, I started becoming very isolated. And honestly, when I think about it now, I think I may have, yes, I'm going to say honestly, I think I I was actually going through a depression as well as a teenager. And for that reason, I didn't talk to anybody. I stayed to myself. But what I also did was I prayed because when I was a very young girl, my mother took me to church and she told me about the power of prayer. So I guess um, if I could think that correctly, it was about when I was maybe 17, 18 years old. Um, you know, I would get into trouble and I would pray. And when I felt like I was discouraged or if I felt like this darkness was around me, I would pray. I prayed a whole lot. And that in itself helped me to stay in the light so that I can be happy and so that I can function on another level. So I would say to you listeners, if you're going through something or if you feel like you don't have anyone to talk to, you should pray because um, God answers prayers. I know when it comes to the religious stuff, some people, you know, they don't want to always hear that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't want to hear that, Dhamma Khan. And the crazy thing about it is why should we wait till the why should we wait till we are messed up to pray? Why can't we pray even when the sun is shining, right? I mean, come yeah. on. You know, but the the fact of the matter is this. You know, I'm not a religious person. I just believe in everything that is higher than me, which is God. He is everything that is higher than me. That's what I believe. I'm not a religious person by far. Um, but... Um, I believe in the power of prayer because prayer changes things. Counseling also changes things. If you don't have anybody to actually call or talk to, counseling changes things because you have someone to talk to. Journaling. What do you think about journaling, um, Damakhan? Do you think that journaling can help somebody if they're going through something? Yeah, I think journaling can definitely help somebody. Um, I like like to write little passages about my day because mm-hmm. it makes me feel better mm-hmm. sometimes mm-hmm. yeah yeah i i i used to journal a whole lot i don't do it as much as i used to but i i mean i have stacks and stacks of journals <laughs> that was my therapy um i would write down like you said i would write about my day i would write about uh, what i like what i didn't like and then i had this thing called what is my attitude what is my attitude? And the reason why I would write that statement, what is my attitude, is because I wanted to examine what I was thinking. I wanted to do inventory on what was going on with me. I wanted to identify my feelings and why I felt the way I felt. So when I would write all of that down and go back and read it, then I would understand where I needed to grow and what I needed to do for me to be better than I was before or yesterday so to speak and so um generally can be very therapeutic you know so so um what are your long-term goals Damakan, for this um com- comedy advice i really like this a lot tell me about your long-term goals for this um i hope that our like fan base not fan base but like the mm-hmm. kids that are helping mm-hmm. like the chapter leaders youth ambassadors and writers that it grows because we know we just started yes and also that the kids really learn from this and benefit because that's why it was created awesome you know i would like to have you and maybe a, a couple of your um your associates from the organization on this uh podcast for another episode i think that we can could collectively talk about a topic that could be helpful to um, others as well as um, just promoting 
what you do because I think that what you're doing is um, something that is needed for the youth. I think that um, we can never get enough of working on ourselves. Um, it is very, very vital that we um, do the work, especially after going through what we all have gone through. We don't know what's going to happen next, but if we are working on ourselves, at least we are doing something for change and change is always healthy and good. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, so basically, um, Donna Khan, your long-term goals is just to continue to progress what you've started. And, um, yes. and so is this a international thing or national, national organization? Um, I think right now it's just in the U S all the, people that are helping are from America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a wonderful thing. That is a wonderful thing. So tell me about um, your experience when it comes to self-care. Because caring for yourself, that's part of the topic. Tell me a little bit about what you do for self-care. Well, sometimes when I'm stressed, because, you know, between um, Instagram and, like, my social media, plus mm -hmm. um, my physical activities, and then also volunteering, and just, like, the many things I have to do, yes. sometimes I just take a break, take a nap, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. I take a shower, and or I read. Reading, I always love to do. And exercise. To help relieve stress. How about Exercise. Oh, yes, exercise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exercise is essential. Um, caring for yourself, um, playing basketball, running, riding a bike, all those things help to manage stress. Because on a daily, of course, I work out. And when I'm going through something and I feel like, you know, something is just not going the way I want it to go, I will work out and work out very hard. So um, exercise is essential. To manage stress but um as i stated listeners if you're going through something and you don't understand your feelings and you don't understand what's happening talk to somebody pray journal write it down express yourself just simply writing it down if you haven't talked to someone um when you do that it's it's just a way to get it out what you say damakan it's just a way to get it out right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it. you can't go wrong with that because, like I said, um, I have journaled for years. And sometimes when I go back and look and read those journals from like 10 years ago, <laughs> I'm like, wow, I was going through that. And, you know, it's amazing because you, you get it out because it's not good to hold things inside. No, right. It's, 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 it's not good. I mean, it could be something from 10 years old, um, you know, something that happened when you were a young, young, young kid. It's not good to just hold everything inside. So, you know, like I said, pray about it, journal, talk to a counselor, talk to your parents, talk to someone that you trust. And if you don't trust anybody, then pray about it. Talk to God. You can't go wrong. Just talk. At least you will get it out. But if you just hold everything inside, it becomes something that is not healthy. And we all need to care for ourselves. And the youth, in my heart, is something very precious. I used to be a a mentor at a high school, Domicon. And oh. yeah, and I loved it. I loved it so much because I just love working with the young people at that time and um and and you know I'm looking forward to doing some work again um but I did it because I didn't plan to do it somebody asked me to do it and so I ended up doing oh. it yeah and then all of a sudden I fell in love with all the kids I fell in love with them and so every day I would walk into high school they would just you know come up to me give me hugs and say good morning and it was a beautiful thing I I have one daughter and so Having one daughter, once I got to the high school, they were all my kids. That's how I looked at it because I just loved them so much. And so um, it was amazing seeing some of them graduate and 
and go to the prom and all that good stuff. And then when it was time for me to leave and move on to the next chapter of my life, it was sad. <laughs> it was, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was sad. But um, caring for yourself is very important. It's important for all of us, no matter how old or young we are. Um, and your mental health is vitally important. It's important that you check yourself every single day. Check yourself to make sure that you are okay. You know, examine yourself in terms of, like I said, getting it out, praying about it, journaling, and doing what it takes to be healthy. What would you say, Dama Khan? I completely agree with that. Journaling is very useful. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you're writing down your feelings, your emotions, and you're just getting everything out at once. Yeah, yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah, so is there anything else you would like to tell the listeners? No, I think we covered everything. Okay. Well, before we end this episode, um, I just want you listeners to really, really think about what me and Damakon stated during this episode. It's so important to care for yourself. It's so important to get out what you're going through. Um, when it comes to the internal part of you, express it, write it down, pray about it, but don't bottle it up. As Damakon said, he used the word bottle. Don't bottle it up because we, we were not created to just keep everything inside. We were created to be expressive. And the more you express yourself, the more healthier you can become. It's important. And I'm not, I'm not talking about expressing yourself in an angry way or a resentful way. I'm talking about expressing yourself in a way to just get out what you're going through. And those tips, um, what me and Demakon Dema Dema mentioned, excuse me, um, journaling, praying, talking to someone, which is counseling, or talking to someone that you trust, those things are important. So listeners, do not forget those tips. And uh, remember that you are important because you were created to be important. You have a purpose on your life and you're not here just to waste time. You have a purpose on your life. So make sure you keep that in mind. Every day you wake up, remember, you have a purpose for your life and you have to care for yourself because self-care is self-love. And so thank you, Damakan, for participating in this episode. And uh, I want to have you back again soon okay oh, thank you i love that name Damakon. <laughs> <laughs> so listeners thank you so much for tuning in to listen to sp favorite thinking podcast and Damakon, thanks again for being my guest here today and i will have you back again and listeners if you need to reach me, you can reach me at sbfavor at yahoo.com via email. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Yes, I have a TikTok handle there. I'm not dancing over there, but there is inspirational and motivational content. So also, you can reach me on YouTube. Please subscribe to my channel. Please click like. Leave me some feedback. And make sure you share, 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 share the podcast with others. Thank you so much for listening to SB Favorite Thinking Podcast. And I want to remind you once again, if you would like to give to the podcast, you can give at Cash App, dollar sign, SB Favor. Thank you so much for listening. You have a good day.